So uh, good afternoon everybody. We're here at uh, South Bank, obviously uh, with G20 uh, a, a, a year or so uh, ahead of us. It's all about planning and pre preparations and uh, today is about uh, the first uh, start of uh, the official uh, community engagement in relation to the business sector as well as the community in relation to uh, the, how G20 is going to uh, transpire but how uh, obviously uh, G20 uh, not just as a holiday for uh, for the for the southeast but also as the benefits of G20 uh, come uh, to uh, to uh, the whole of Brisbane G20 obviously is a great time to uh, show the uh, the great work the Queensland Police and Emergency Services do within this great state but it's also a great time to showcase the beautiful Brisbane, the beautiful Queensland because we've got uh, obviously activities happening with the uh, the financial uh, ministers uh, in Cairns and uh, as well as the top 20 leaders here in Brisbane so it's a great way to showcase a beautiful city particularly here at South Bank uh, where we have a uh, a variety of, uh, of different uh, uh, businesses and uh, I really encourage the community to uh, embrace G20 and take it on board as a time to, uh, to showcase uh, this particular area as well as the whole of Queensland because we have a great state and we have great opportunities uh, with the, uh, the coming here of G20 in the future. So Assistant Commissioner, you want to say a few words? Yeah. Uh, thank you everybody for attending this media conference today. Um, as the Minister mentioned, a lot about uh, today is about community engagement, which will be an important component of G20. Um, you all know November next year the Leaders' Forum will be held at the BCNEC, and a part of um, us getting out here today is basically to tell you how community engagement will work with the residences, the businesses and the community of Brisbane. So we will be using traditional as well as the social media forms of communication and in the next few months and particularly when we take on the presidency in December, uh, there will be a lot of community engagement work going around this part of Brisbane in particular. Um, uh, whilst um, there will be some restricted areas as we lead into that very, very busy week, those areas haven't been declared yet, but certainly uh, when those areas um, are declared, will be having our community engagement team do not only door knocking, going from business to business, but they will be um, have a holding also community forums, as well as taking up with the very body, various body corporations to inform businesses, community and residents what will be taking place here. Um, I might pass it on to um, my deputy shortly, but if there's any questions about anything else at the end of this, please do ask. But on behalf of the QPS, I just want to mention that this is a wonderful opportunity for the Queensland Police Service. This is our largest security operation that the Queensland Police Service will ever deliver. As such, we have put an extraordinary amount of resources towards it already, and the planning group has been in place already for some eight months. Planning um, is quite well advanced, and also that planning is taking place with not only our state agencies, but also the numerous Commonwealth agencies that are involved. Although this is a Commonwealth event, the lead security provider will be the Queensland Police Service for all G20 events held in Queensland. So thank you. Well, just in relation to the uh, security requirements, we just want to make it clear that while the QPS has a key role, we're very much in a partnership approach here. All three levels of government, Commonwealth, state and, uh, and local government are strongly supporting what we're doing. We also have a very strong connection with the business community and there's representatives here uh, from the business community to talk about that relationship. Everyone in the community I'm sure appreciates that this is the biggest peacetime security operation potentially in Australia's history and it's going to be necessary for us to have appropriate security in place and that is our commitment. I'm sure everyone uh, who's either a visitor or a resident around this area will understand that if there is a tension between security requirements and public amenity and access to this site, that those things will necessarily have to be resolved in favour of appropriate security. Thank you. Uh, could I just invite uh, John, John to come forward, please? Yeah, this is John Aiken yeah. from Brisbane Marketing. Please, John, thank you. Uh, firstly, just to congratulate the Minister and the Queensland Police Service for uh, taking this uh, you know, consultative approach so early in the piece. Uh, 
Um, you know, obviously uh, there will be, uh, <coughs> you, you suggested, some disruption to industry and business. But if you put that in the context of what G20 represents, uh, we're already out there, this marketing's already out there with the Lord Mayor marketing Brisbane to the world. We've been doing it with Barack Obama and others as our poster boys, uh, saying that G20 has chosen Brisbane. And so why doesn't the world? We're in a world stage. We're actually competing with cities all over the world. And for uh, the week of uh, November 15-16 uh, uh, in 2014, Brisbane will be the capital of the world. And this is our one opportunity to really put Brisbane on the world stage in conjunction with Queensland and get a very, very strong message out there. We're open for business uh, and so what minimal disruption occurs uh, as a matter of uh, the security uh, requirements of the conference is minimal compared to the enormous opportunities that this event presents. So. Uh, if you think back 20 years ago, uh, we wouldn't have had the infrastructure to be able to do this. And I think it's incredibly exciting that the world has chosen Brisbane. And, uh, and I think it's incredibly exciting that we have a very proactive police service and minister who are really going hard to make sure that everybody's included and we can make the most out of this opportunity. What we've also had to do is obviously uh, we've, we've uh, set aside a, a public holiday leading into that uh, particular area because obviously uh, we have to look at not just uh, with the, the leaders coming here but uh, for an event, you know, it's anything up to, to five to six thousand people uh, that will uh, be involved in the whole of the operation of the event. And today is part of that of, uh, as well as uh, getting out in, in, the, in the media and, uh, and getting it out through the departments is actually getting it out, as uh, the system commissioner said, door to door, going to businesses and explaining to them uh, exactly what will be happening to them on the ground. Do we have a rough idea of just how many homes and businesses will be affected? Look, uh, I can get uh, the, the final points with Heather in to, to give some detail. Um, just uh, probably not quite articulate, from the outset in terms of planning, the philosophy has been minimum disruption where we can. Having said that though, having regard to the enormity of the event, particularly the le week leading into the Leaders Forum, there will be disruption in the immediate area. Whilst we haven't worked out the numbers, residents will certainly have access to their residents, so there won't be an issue there. We've already met with South Bank businesses to articulate to them, at this early stage, what we believe the disruption will be. But particularly, um, it will be particularly that week, and like I said from the outset, it's minimum disruption. But having, but having regard to the event, there will be some disruption that way. So, so what is that immediate area? Uh, we're talking about around the venue, particularly the, the, the streets, the infrastructure in terms of the buses, rail, and the roads around the venue. Yeah, which particular geographic area constitutes the immediate area? Well, well the, the roads alongside BCDC in particular, so do you and around. All those businesses to remain on Gray Street, there may be some disruption to businesses, however, we are trying to minimise that. Can you outline what could fall into that restricted area? Are you talking about transport corridors, hospitals? What sort of things are you looking at? Even though decision was made, there are some transport corridors, but definitely not hospitals. They are not within this area, as you can appreciate the martyrs further out, and so are the other hospitals. So certainly, not they will not be within the restricted area. We will be using a, a, a type of a pass system for residents to acknowledge that they live in that area, so they'll have right of entry and exit from their residence. And will they be free to come and go during the day? Or the they will be free to come and go through the day. So do you have an idea of how many people live in the area? Uh, thousands. <laughs> yes, it is. It definitely is. We haven't sat down and, um, and worked out the numbers exactly, but thousands of people will be affected. But we will be meeting with their uh, body corporate to explain exactly how uh, they will be affected. But it will be minimum disruption to the residents because they'll be able to access their residents. And what you've, what you've also got to imagine is that's the idea of having this uh, long leading because uh, you will get a number of people who are living in residences now that'll come and go before the actual event uh, transpires. So we have to ensure that you know we we uh, obviously uh, let people know now, but also that the people coming into those particular areas, areas as far as the body corporates, fully understand the uh, what will be happening over that time. Can Minister, I encourage, you mentioned. Sorry, sorry yeah. can I encourage residents to contact us? Me, sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Can I encourage residents to please contact the G20 um, unit now engagement team? There is a link to the police website already, so they can email, phone. Um, they will be updated with any information that we have as we lead towards this.